So we are starting this Wednesday edition of the Sportsmax Zone with football. The CONCACAF Nations League has been a show to behold over the recent international window with a number of entertaining and high-level clashes being witnessed right here on your home of champions. Now, as CONCACAF continues to grow and develop the countries it governs, president of the organization, Victor Montaliani, is at the helm of that development for the region's football. We are happy to have here on the Sportsmax Zone uh, the man himself, Victor uh, right here in our Sports Max studios. Welcome to the Sports Max Zone. Welcome again to Jamaica. Um, you were on our show about maybe seven years ago. Yes. Great, great, great to have you back, Victor. It's been a long time. I, I know this is a working trip for you because yep. you leave Jamaica tomorrow for Bonaire and then you go on to Guyana. Um, what happened today at your press conference and um, what's the latest that you can give us? Well, it's been a great visit. First, I started off, um, went to the JFF facilities in uh, Mona. Yes. Um, great facilities, great work being done there. I know they just had an under-17 camp. Um, so it's great to see that kind of activity. Uh, then we had a, a great meeting with, minister, with the minister. Um, she's allowed me to call her Babsy. Uh, because that's what she goes by. So, Minister, you, allowed, you gave me that, that permission. Great meeting, uh, obviously, great person, great character, uh, great servant to the country. And we just talked about, uh, first of all, the announcement last night about the um, refurbishment, refurbishment of the stadium. Of the stadium. Yeah. You know, we had the Gold Cup here in 2019. Uh, it was, you know, we brought it here because it was a, a good starting point of, of, of trying to get things going. Um, I'm not saying we're responsible for, for the refurbishment, but I think <laughs> when you start investing that kind of money in infrastructure, it's going to attract events, uh, regional events, international events. Uh, obviously, you know, they have a track, which it's going to attract that, but it has a football pitch. And, and uh, we told them any support they, they need from a technical standpoint, ensuring that things are done the right way so that can attract events, uh, we're here to help. And um, you know, I think uh, from that perspective, you know, it's going to be a very good starting point once they're done in, in two, three years uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, putting themselves in a position to get some, some international events. Yeah, and based on what we are hearing, the people involved with the refurbishment have great experience. Yes. They were involved in the I Wembley know. Stadium, the O2 Arena, yeah. San Siro, yeah. Stadio Olimpico, so yeah. they, they have a, a, an impressive resume. They do, and uh, I know of them, and, uh, you know, obviously it's good to always get somebody with that kind of experience and, you know, knowing what our football is all about as well, and um, uh, obviously there'll be a multi-use as well, which is a reality of uh, many, many um, stadiums nowadays. You, you're so. talking, of course, about, like, international um, shows and not necessarily <laughs> sporting events because I know the O2 Arena in London yeah. has major boxing events and yeah. other events outside yeah, of football. I mean, and it's a reality of economics now, right? Yeah. And you, you see now even, I mean, even the new uh, Real Madrid Stadium with how they take the, the field off the pitch. I mean, that's that's a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's going to happen here. I know that. But you're right. It, it's a reality of economics of a, of a stadium. Yeah. yeah. Morat spoke at the top of the show about the CONCACAF Nations League, which yes. is shown live on, on our, our channels. And um, really great to see Jamaica and Suriname booking quarterfinal yes. spots here. Suriname, a vastly improved team from yeah. the Caribbean Football Union. Your thoughts on the Nations League and how it has flourished over the years. Yeah, I think it's really been the impetus of change for our confederation. Uh, the one thing when I, uh, when I first here seven years ago, I, I said the one thing that we need to do is have a football first philosophy. Well, football first meaning is meaning competitions and development first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so we've done that on both sides of that. Uh, obviously the Nations League being the pinnacle of that. The vast majority of our countries would play single-digit games in, in a four-year span. I'm not sure how you're going to get better. Um, and now they're doing, you know, they're doing 20, 30 games or more, depending on all their results, in a four-year span. That's attracted international coaches. That's attracted players who now want to play for their diaspora. Yeah. It's also given a carrot to other players that are younger for instance, on island, that see an aspiration that I can actually be that 
player there in, in five, ten years' time. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really changed the dynamics, both on the men's side and on the women's side. As you saw with our W Championship, obviously we know uh, the reggae girls and two, two World Cups. You know, they're elite now, wor world-class elite, uh, with arguably one of the best players in the world, Bunny. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you saw other Caribbean islands that, you know, five, six years ago barely had a program, if they even had one, like a Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. um, like a Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. And so you see now that the, the investment, and it's not just the financial investment, it's actually the emotional investment as well, mm -hmm. in really focusing on a football first philosophy is starting to pay dividends six, seven, eight years down the road. Yeah. Um, you've already sold it. But I will press you a little bit further on this because I've had discussions with some traditionalists in, in Caribbean football yeah. and, and some of them missed the Caribbean Football Union Caribbean Cup and they feel that it was uh, uh, an essential part of Caribbean football. Um, sell your Nations League ahead of the Caribbean Cup then for us. Yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, I mean, the results speak for itself. Yes. Uh, you have nations that never had a dream of playing anything. It's, this, it's about... There's nothing wrong with what we did in the past. Uh, we also only had, you know, 16 teams in the World Cup. Now you have 48 teams. It's called evolution. And the reality is, is football is a global game. It's not a regional game. It's about your federation and your country versus other countries. Of course, you know, uh, you have some regionalism, but the reality is we've grown out of that, and that's why you played Honduras the other night. Yes. All right? Right here. Mm -hmm. That's why Suriname you know, beat a Central American team. That's why the U.S. is coming here in November to play Jamaica and, in the quarterfinals. And I, I guess that's why Montserrat can pay, play, pay, play El Salvador, which wouldn't have happened in the Correct. past. Yeah. And so, so the truth is, listen, you're always going to have uh, people with different opinions, but I can tell you, speaking to our federation, speaking to the presidents, this has led to the sort of not only the development of our federations, but really the launch pad of our federations in bringing in sponsors, bringing in more media, bringing in more players. And, and it, it's, it's the reality of football now. Uh, and, you know, we had to get in line uh, or else we would have been stuck in the dark ages, quite frankly, as a confederation. Yeah, and you know, when you speak about attracting sponsors, I instantly think about funding because it's something that's never enough. You can never have enough when yeah. you want to develop a country, right? Um, can you talk to me about some of the programs that are in place to help Caribbean countries, specifically the smaller Caribbean countries that Absolutely. need assistance? So a couple of things. One, however, what we've done is, because the national team program is a little different, on the club side, We've now empowered the Caribbean Shield, which is now being run by the Caribbean Football Union. And that's where I think the regionalism has to lie, the development of those young players at a club level and empowering the clubs regionally. So you have the Caribbean Shield that goes into the Caribbean Cup, that goes into our Champions Cup. And that's where I think we need to start sort of watering the plants of that sort of growth regionally so we can grow it. Because the truth of a national team is that you're getting players from all over the world. And so we're starting to help a lot of RMAs through our club development and club licensing. Uh, I mean, just in Jamaica, we, they went from almost zero to 14 clubs now yeah. that are properly licensed. That shows you the work that's being done at the club level. And those clubs will compete in those competitions I just said. Our one CONCACAF program that was launched six, seven years ago that started with... Uh, you know, very small means, and it, it's grown into really contributing hundreds of thousands of dollars to each uh, federation uh, at the levels that were even up, are now above what FIFA used to be. Now, FIFA has also gone to another level with their FIFA Ford. But that is a, a program that is sustainable, that is the, our members can sort of count on year in and year out. And so that's how we're helping the MAs. And the truth is, and I said it today in the press conference, I think what we've done is rather than give RMAs, just give them fish, we've taught them how to fish. Yeah. Through our programs like our executive mentorship program, our administrative programs. And you, now you're starting to see executive and administrative talent coming out of the Caribbean. It's not just obviously talented footballers. And, and that, to me, that's a sign of, of the sustainability of our federations for not only uh, for long term, but also for potential growth. 
Yeah, you speak about th those administrative programs, and I have to ask about educational programs Absolutely. to ensure that, you know, we have the best coaches in place, the best referees at a particular yeah. match, and the best administrative team to ensure that, you know, when teams, let's just say like the USA, visit the Caribbean, everything is in place and executed in a top-class manner. Yes, I, I couldn't agree with you more because... Uh, you have to have, you know, when your players come into a program, they have to have a, a, what I call a five-star experience. Right. Uh, and so that means that the people that are working in a program have to have that kind of ability, and you have to educate them there. You, you might not start that way. That's fine. But um, you, you have to, and we've done that through our, our CONCACAF Academy that, that's now educating young administrators, our executive mentorship program that is educating executives so those are the programs that have sort of underpin because you can't just keep going with competitions and development program that's all great but you know you have to do club licensing you have to do our coaching convention that we've started doing where now coaches are able to get jobs somewhere else because their license is going to be recognized in another CONCACAF country but you make a great point those are all they're maybe not as sexy as just the Nations League quarterfinal between Jamaica and USA but they're so important in the viability and the sustainability of our game in our region. Yeah, and I know you cited Jamaica as a perfect example because, I mean, they have a bunny show, so that's a good example. Yes. But you are aware that there are many smaller Caribbean countries that don't have proper female programs. You 100%. know, young girls, the first thing, they don't think about being a footballer because that is not what they are accustomed to. Are you um, going to, you know, just try to make change in those areas or find out about it, how they're affected? Yeah, and we've already started that. We launched our W, our w strategy in 2019, and uh, our W strategy in short order already paid dividends. If you would have told me that we would have qualified six teams to the Women's World Cup in 2023, I would have said, come on, really? And we did. Countries that had no programs mm -hmm. uh, at the time in 2019. There's still challenges, uh, of course, in, in, in the mo a lot of the smaller in our smaller RMAs. But our, our W strategy is, listen, it's all great. And, you know, obviously, you know, USA won the gold and Canada has won the gold and they won the World, won the World Cup. That's great. And you, we, can, we can all, you know, be proud of that. But that's not our reality. Our reality is, is ensuring that every girl in our confederation has the opportunity to kick a ball. Right. It is as simple as that. I'm not, you know, fine. If they can go down the spectrum and, and win, great. Uh, you know, I'll take that too. But really our goal is to allow every girl in every federation the opportunity that, regardless of their age, that they have an opportunity to play football. And I know that our 41 presidents in our confederation are, have bought into that. And it's not going to happen overnight, but it's slowly but surely it, it, that, that sort of wheel is turning and you're starting to see a lot more programs in federations that you never saw even five years ago. Yeah, Al, I watched the interview that you did with the Sportsmax team seven years ago. I was not a part yeah. of the team just yet. But one of the things that stood out to me from that interview is you were pushing the mantra of ensuring that the 41 members felt like family. Yes. Right? We're seven years later now. I'm now asking you this question. Do you feel as president that you've made any progress with the countries, the members, feeling like family. Yeah, and if you come, and you're more than welcome to come to any of our congresses or to oh. any of our president's <laughs> meetings, and I, I invite you, and you can actually, it is very palatable, that feeling of family. Just like a family, it doesn't mean we don't have disagreements, doesn't Correct. mean we don't have debate, um, and, uh, but that's a sign of what a family is all about. But we find solutions, you know. We find solutions to whatever problems that is, travel, logistics, uh, development issues, competition issues, governance issues. Um, you know, after all, uh, the Confederation is made up of human beings. Human beings are fallible. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, A, you're not going to have empathy towards that. You're not going to try to help them. And in the end, it's, it's really about football and family. And it is very, very obvious that our 41 members feel that way. Yeah. Um, again, that there's a ch that we have discussions on an issue that we may disagree upon that's fine um, but the question is not the disagreement it's about the solution to that issue so but yeah it's been a significant cultural change in our confederation 
And it's not just me saying that. A lot of the other confederations who come to our events, they see it and they feel it. I mean, I feel it because the fact that you're here in Jamaica, you don't have any major announcement. You're no. here to meet with the presidents. Um, the president of the St. Lucia Football Association is here as well. It just speaks to the fact that, you know, everybody feels comfortable and they're trying to have these discussions with you. Yeah, listen, I mean, for me, uh, you know, the best thing about family is just when you break bread with family and have a chat and there's nothing better to chat about than football. Yeah. <laughs> Victor Montagliani, Montagliani, he is the president of CONCACAF, that's the Confederation of North, Central America and Caribbean Football. Uh, we have more to discuss with him. We'll talk uh, more about the development of the sport in the region and also the fact that the region is uh, going to be hosting the 2026 World Cup Finals in uh, Mexico, Canada and the USA. He's a Canadian, by the way. And after the break, we'll be back with him with uh, more discussion on football. Back in a moment.